guys, thanks so much for joining us online this morning. We want to let you know that if you live nearby, we are meeting in person every Sunday at 10 a.m. and we would love for you to join us. This morning, uh, we're going to be talking about um, being tender-hearted, and we're going to be getting into this over the next few weeks. Why is that important? What does it mean to be tender-hearted? Why does that even matter? We're going to get into that. Um, but if I were to ask you this morning, what's your heart like lately, what would you say? If I were to ask you, what's the condition of your heart lately, you know, what would you say or what would you think? You know, well, what's the condition of your heart? Now, the Bible has much to say about our hearts. Uh, the, it actually mentions the heart over oh, close to a thousand times, the Bible does. We sing songs like we were just singing uh, about God moving our hearts, speaking to our hearts. Uh, and I'm asking you this morning, what's the condition of your heart? And when we talk about our hearts, what is the heart anyway? What are we talking about when we, when we sing about hearts, when we talk about hearts? Now, obviously, we have a physical heart. But what is the spiritual heart that we refer to so often? I'm going to take a moment to just pray here for a second. Jesus, I just pray, Lord, that you would grace us with your presence here this morning, Lord. That you would touch down on our hearts, God. That you would, you would sow your word into our hearts, God. That you would make our hearts... Uh, fertile ground, God, for, for your word, Lord, uh, that our hearts would be receptive, Jesus, to, to what you want to say and what you want to do. Cover this time, I pray, Lord Jesus. Bless us here this morning. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. What is the heart that we talk about? Well, the Bible defines the heart as this. It says the heart is the spiritual part of us where our thoughts, emotions, and desires dwell. So the heart is the core of our being. Now, when you think about the human heart from a physical perspective, I mean, the heart is central to life. Your entire life is a byproduct of this heart that keeps beating, keeping you alive. As the physical heart is central to, to life and living, the spiritual heart is central to every aspect of your life and, and what your life even looks like, we're going to find out. But when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's really referring to the mind, the will, the emotions. Now, God has a heart, the sense that God has a mind, God has emotions, God has desires as well. So it can be said that God has a heart. We're made in his image. We, we have a heart because God has one. The Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. God's word says that God blesses those who know and follow his heart. So we see God has a heart. Your heart makes up your thoughts, your desires, your emotions. Every choice you make, every word you speak, everything you do, guess what? It flows from the heart. That's what God's word says. Look at this scripture in Proverbs 27, verse 19. It says, as water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. If your life is more often filled with frustration, dissatisfaction, anger, discontentment, turmoil, well, it's a reflection of the heart. Now, if your life is more often filled with joy, peace, kindness, and thankfulness, those kinds of things, it's a reflection of the heart. As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. Listen to Jesus' words about the heart in Luke chapter 6. He says this, A good person produces good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil person produces evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Ouch, because if we think about some of the things that our mouth speaks sometimes, oh, my heart is full of that. Look at Genesis chapter 6. It says that the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil. So it just showed that scripture to say that the thoughts reflect the heart. The heart is made up of those thoughts. 
even from just these few scriptures that we looked at, we can see that the heart is central to everything you do. It affects your life, your decisions, what you think, what you say. It's very much a reflection of who you are. So how's your heart lately? What condition is it in? Now, if we're honest with ourselves, it doesn't take long to know or see that many times our hearts may not always be in the best place and condition. Probably on a daily basis, our hearts wrestle through all kinds of things, emotions, thoughts, desires, and everything you do flows from the heart. I don't have that scripture, but that's out of Proverbs 4. So the truth is, is that the human heart tends to be problematic. Everyone else's, just not ours, right? It's everyone else's hearts that are problematic, just not mine. I got some good news for you this morning. The good news is that God has a plan and desire for our hearts. God is willing. I mean, he wants to do it. God's desire is to form in you a tender heart. That's what God wants to do. He wants to mold a tender heart in every single one of us. Now, what does that mean? Some, some might say, you know, I don't know that I want to have a tender heart. I don't know that I like the sound of that. Well, having a tender heart, it's not about you being a passive person, a soft person that everyone just walks over and takes advantage of. That, that's not what having a tender heart is about. A tender heart is a heart that is easily moved to love It's easily moved towards compassion, and it's easily moved towards remorse. Having a tender heart is very, very important. And it goes far beyond just being nice to other people. Having a tender heart, it's not about just being tender in in our actions and our words and responses, but a tender heart is also just as much, if not more, about the way that we respond to God in the way that we consider the things of God in our lives. So I want to take a second just to look at some of the differences between uh, someone with a tender heart versus someone with a heart that's maybe becoming hard. Uh, You know, whatever the condition and place your heart is in, our, our hearts always tend to be moving in one direction or the other. Now, hopefully, and God willingly, Our hearts are moving in that direction where they're being made more tender, tender. But your heart can move also in a direction of actually becoming harder, hardening. It's becoming cold. Now, we don't want that, but let's look at the differences. Uh, Now, a tender heart is a heart that is often at peace. It's at ease, sort of at rest. Even when things, you know, there's issues and troubles that we face in this life. But a hardening heart, it's a heart that is more often stressed. And it's, there's chaos going on inside. It's filled with restlessness and worry. That's a picture of a heart that, that's starting to become hard. A tender heart is another one. Is a, is a heart that is slow to anger and does not respond harshly with anger but a hardening heart it's quick to anger and it does respond harshly now we know that anger in itself is not a sin but but what is causing the heart to become so angry so quickly is the question why is a heart filled with anger so quickly now how we respond in our anger of course can lead to sin But harshness and criticalness, those are signs of a heart that is becoming hardened. Gentleness and kindness are signs and the outworkings of a heart that's becoming tender. Here's another one. A tender heart, it looks for the good in others and overlooks shortcomings. A hardening heart is overly critical of others and is fault-finding. Always looking for, you know, suspicious of people. And I know that their intentions were this. And I'm going to find everything that this person has. I know they got issues in their life. Fault finding. A hard, hardening heart, it's very critical. Finds faults easy in others. But a tender heart, 
chooses to believe the best, God's best for that person, even when you do see some of their shortcomings or flaws. A tender heart knows that everyone's in a process, right? Because we're, we're following Jesus. Everyone's in a process. Here's a, a last little one. A tendering heart. A tender heart is it easily forgives and overlooks offenses. A heart that is becoming hard refuses to forgive and it holds on to offenses. It just cannot let those things go. Does not easily overlook even the smallest of offenses. So these are just a few of many. You know, the differences between a heart that's tender and one that is becoming a hardening heart in the life of a person. But what about the difference um, in a heart that is tender towards God and, and, and a, versus a heart uh, that is becoming hard towards God? Let's look at a few of these. A tender heart towards God is a heart that is sensitive to the things of God. But a hardening heart towards God is it's less and less moved by the things of God. For example, a tender heart is moved by the word of God. I mean, you just get in the word, you hear someone reading the word and oh, it's doing something. It's like cutting me on the inside. You think the things that God has done in your past, the things you remember that God did, the way that he answered prayer, those things, when you think about them, they still move your heart. They stick with you. You can't get them out of your mind. Those things, do they still move you to tears? So that would be a sign of a heart that is tendering. Or on the opposite, if our heart is becoming harder, you know, the, the, the things of God, worship, prayer, his word, they just move you less and less. You're not as interested in them. They don't really capture you. They're not moving enough. Uh, They're difficult for you to even prioritize in your life. That's a sign of a heart that is becoming hard. Here's another one. A tender heart is sensitive to the voice of God. A tender heart recognizes God's voice in their life, God's call. It recognizes God speaking to them and guiding them and and directing them in which way to go. But a hardening heart, it cannot remember maybe the last time that God spoke or it's becoming unacquainted with the Holy Spirit. Doesn't recognize him anymore. Can't hear your voice, God. Now, there's more that can be listed But the thing is, is that if our hearts are becoming hard, it's a major problem. When the things of God, his word, when worship, when prayer, when even just thinking about God, when it doesn't do much in your life, when it's not doing anything in your heart, when this happens, it's an indicator that something is not right on the inside. The heart is becoming hard. Now, the scary thing about a heart that is losing its tenderness is that it's there's a subtle drift that happens I remember when I was a kid one time uh, we used to go to California every summer and I'd uh, go to the beach with my cousin we'd be swimming and I remember like if you don't pay attention to where you're at just even right there in the in the waves the the shallow waves just swimming in there it can take you down and, and you don't even know and I remember one time that the what do you call that the the current it took me so far down there, and I was just playing. We are having fun, and then all of a sudden, we looked up, and, you know, you get scared because you realize that your family's not there. You know, you're probably like 10 or 12 years old. I don't know where I am. We're lost. You know, you start panicking. It just took me, and I just didn't even realize it. That's what happens and can happen to the heart that is subtly and drifting into that place of, of hardness. Many who suffer from it are unconscious of it. And as tenderness is lost and the hardening process happens, we're often unaware of it. And a tender heart can be lost. Can it be regained? Yes, it can be regained. But not as easily as it is hardened. And that's a scary thing. Now, we looked at some differences between someone who has a tender heart versus someone who has a hard heart. 
Um, and, and then we looked at some differences between a heart that's tender towards God and one that is not so tender towards God. But the truth about both of these is that they are actually linked together. They go hand in hand. You know, the heart that is tender to God is also the heart that, that, that is tender towards others. Regularly tender towards others. Because the heart that is tender to, towards God is the heart that allows God to, to move through it. That's the heart that is allowing the Holy Spirit to, to bring forth fruitfulness in its life. This is what Galatians 5 says. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The heart that is not tender towards God, this is the heart that is becoming hard and showing all the symptoms and signs of a hard heart. The reason why it's doing that is because it's not getting life from the source, but the tender heart is the one that has God at the source, and it's allowing the Holy Spirit to bring the fruits of the Spirit into its life. It's a work of the Spirit. So a tender heart towards God. God will use it to form tenderness in the life of the person and to bring forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The two are linked together. Now, we're not just like tender towards people, but not tender towards God. It doesn't work that way. Now, when you think about, you know, tenderness, being tender towards people, being tender towards God, when you think about it, it raises the question, it raises the question, what causes our hearts to become so hard anyway? You know, why do our hearts become hardened? Now, we're going to be looking at this over the next several weeks. There are many things that can cause our hearts to become hardened. But for this morning, I just want to share one main one with you. And the, one of the main reasons why our hearts become hard is because sin hardens the heart. That's what sin does. You know, in recent years, even in my lifetime, you know, you've kind of seen, uh, well, you know, it's just sin. It's not that big of a problem. I mean, you know, Jesus died on the cross. So yes, anyone can find mercy and forgiveness, but, but the effects of sin are devastating. The effects of sin cause the heart to become hard. Sin has a desensitizing effect on the conscience. Sin makes it difficult to distinguish right from wrong. It could be said that in almost all forms of sin, there's a kind of pridefulness and a selfishness. In the Bible, uh, it's said about King uh, or Pharaoh that his pride and his arrogance, that sin hardened his heart. In Romans chapter 1, it says that some people are so given over to their sin that it actually permanently sears their, their consciences. Their hearts become seared. So sin is devastating in the life of a person in that it hardens, and it can harden to the point of someone just saying, you know what, I'm shut off to God. I don't believe in God anymore. I'm not interested in God. They go their own way, but that's the effect of sin on the heart. Now, the hope we have is that God can break into any heart. God has the power to do it. God can, can break into any heart. But the thing is, is that there has to be something in our hearts that wants him to. Do, that, uh, wants him to. You know, there's got to be something in us that says, God, I, I want you. I need you to break in. But people who are so resistant towards God and who ignore God, who seemingly want nothing to do with God, they, in part, get to that place because of the effects of sin on their hearts. So how do we get a tender heart? You know, what steps can we take? Well, I want a tender heart, and I know that I need one. And so for this morning, I want to read a passage out of Second Chronicles. Uh, we read about this young king named Josiah. We named our, our son after this king in the Bible. Uh, this king, Josiah, he became a king at a young age, and he honored God in all that he did. Now, one of God's prophets gave him word one day 
uh, that God was going to bring destruction upon his people. He was a king over Judah. Um, and God was going to bring destruction in his lifetime because of the sins that they had committed. Uh, the whole nation, the whole people, they f- had forsaken God. They had began to worship other gods. Now, again, he became king at a young age. But even that generation that before him that he grew up in was birthed into, uh, these guys were far from God. Now, when King Josiah, when he heard this word of the Lord from the prophet come to him that God was going to bring destruction, uh, he responded in a certain way. He, what Josiah did immediately was that he, it says that he tore his clothes, feeling mournful and sorrowful for the sins of his people, and he humbled himself before God. And here's how God responds to him. In 2 Chronicles 34, 27, it says, uh, God says, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and its people, and you have humbled yourself before me and have torn your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Your eyes will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this place and those who live here. So God extends mercy. God relents. God noticed and called out King Josiah's tenderness, the tenderness of his heart. That's what God was highlighting. God noticed this. And what was his tenderness? Well, it was in that he humbled himself. He had a a heart of sorrow, remorse, and repentance. So what steps can we take? We can follow King Josiah's uh, his way. And, we, and it starts with acknowledging the issues and the sinfulness in our own hearts and asking God to change our hearts and forgive us. I mean, that's just the first step. As the allowance of sin in our lives hardens the heart, it is sorrow for sin that softens the heart. You know, when we, when we have remorse over the things in our hearts, before God, that softens the heart. Now, when you look squarely at your own heart and you see all the issues and even the sinfulness, and when you say, God, I need your help. I need your help. Now, I've got these just continual heart issues in my life. I I can't seem to get a hold of them. I can't control them as hard as I do. When you do that, that's the heart that God will respond to. And that's the heart that is going to be made tender by his spirit. That's the heart that God does his best work in. This is what 2 Corinthians 7 says this. It says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Now our way to God forming a tender heart First step is just sorrow over sin and repentance. But what does repentance look like? What does true repentance look like? You know, for King Josiah, it wasn't him just offering this quick little prayer to God. I mean, it was genuine. God responded, you know, and he's tearing his clothes and he's weeping. But repentance for him, actually, it went another step. Um everything in his life, Josiah said, you know, going forward, I'm going to remove everything, God. Anything that is just not in line with who you are, anything that is displeasing to you, Josiah says, I'm going to get it out of my life. Anything wrong in your eyes, God, and Josiah got rid of it. He was the first king to do this in a long time. Verse 4 says this, it says, under his direction, it says the altars of the Baals were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them and smashed the Asherah poles and the idols. So there was all these different temples, these different places where people would worship other gods. Josiah, he mobilized people to just smash these things. It goes more into what he did, but he just got rid of that stuff. True repentance and sorrow over sin And the things that grieve God, it looks like not only asking God for forgiveness, but getting rid of everything that grieves God and hinders relationship with Him. 
Proverbs 17, 3, look at this verse. It says, the crucible for silver, the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Do you know that when we get a, when we get a look at our heart and we see the things in our hearts, when we become aware of that, you know what we do, what people tend to do is we tend to run. I want to run from God. I want to stay away from God because the Holy Spirit searches the heart. He tests the heart. And his light shines into all the dark areas. And and, and he allows us to see some of these things. And when we see those things in our lives, we're like, man, I don't even want to look at that. There is some ugly parts of my heart. We want to run from it. The broken parts. But God is good. God shines his light. And he brings those things to the surface for a reason. He doesn't do it so we can feel beaten down and so we can feel condemned over who we are and just continue on that way. That's not why God does that. God's good. He shines his light into our hearts, testing what is there because he wants to mold and create in us a tender heart. He wants to change our hard hearts. God wants to heal the wounded and the broken places, the hurt places the lonely places, the sinful things. God wants to heal those things. He wants to bring life to those places. Only God can do it. But our tendency is to just run, get out of there. I love, um, I don't have this scripture, but uh, when, when Simon Peter, when he had first kind of met Jesus, Jesus was preaching on the shore. Jesus asked Peter if uh, he can use his boat. Um, after he gets done preaching, Peter, he tells him to cast his nets into the the ocean. Peter just pulls this huge catch. Um, And in that moment, Peter basically realizes that this Jesus is the Messiah. I mean, this is God in the flesh right here. And Peter's response to God is he, he gets on his knees and he's weeping. And this is what Peter says. He says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And I just think in that moment, there's Peter before Jesus, the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel. And there must have been a a searching of his heart. There must have been uh, these things coming to the surface in Peter's life. And what was his, his instinctual reaction, just like most people's, everybody's? Depart from me, Jesus. Get away from me. I'm a sinful man. But if we ask God to change and to forgive our hearts, he will do it. The crucible for silver, the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. You know, like heat is used to refine gold when, when they're refining gold. All the impurities come to the top. Well, God, he tests the heart, and as he shines his light, he, he does it with the intention to refine our hearts. When we draw close to God, And then these things, the impurities start coming to the top. All the things in our hearts, the impurities in our lives, if we bring them to God, if we give them to him, we allow him then to change us. And what God does is he will scoop those things out. He'll remove those things. And there's just a continual process of God refining our hearts. And you see those things when you're made aware of them in your heart, you just can bring them to God. God, I got this stuff in me. I need, I need your hand. I need your help. I need you to cleanse me. God will remove that stuff. But if you run from it, if you, if you hide from it, you turn from it, God, I've got this stuff. I don't want to look at it. Uh, I'm forgetting it. You know what? That stuff goes right back down. Stays in that heart. But God will refine your heart. He wants to form tenderness in you and that's why he those things he brings them to the surface you know one of the miracles of salvation is that God gives us a new heart the miracle of salvation when you put your faith in Jesus when you believe in him when you say yes God I want a real relationship with you Jesus, I believe in you. I want to follow you. I want a real relationship with you. When you do that, God does something miraculous. 
He does something that every single one of us, every person absolutely needs. Every human being absolutely needs a new heart. And God's power to regenerate us, change our hearts. You know what? This is why Jesus said everyone must be born again. Part of being born again is God doing exactly this, giving us a new heart, putting his spirit in you, and removing that hardness of sin that that causes our hearts to become hard. As God does this and as he changes our hearts, one evidence of him doing it is that our hearts begin to love and long for holiness and righteousness. That's what God does when he puts his spirit in us, when he gives us a new heart. You will find that your heart begins to long for holiness and righteousness. Your heart starts to become just repulsed by some of the ugly things that are in there, uh, sin and evil. I mean, those things that your heart, they just sicken your heart. They grieve your heart. Well, it's because God's giving you a new heart. And Jose, if you want to come up here, I'd appreciate that. We're just getting into this series of messages. Tender-hearted. God wants to form a tender heart in you. But you need to know this morning that Jesus is after your heart. He wants to form in you and all of us hearts that are tender, that His Spirit can work through and, and bring forth fruit, the fruits of the Spirit, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, those things in your life. But our first step to regaining a tender heart, and this is like an everyday step, is just to keep short accounts with God. Keep short accounts with him. In transparency, just bring to him the stuff. He sees it anyway. It's not like you can hide it from him. God knows what's going on in our hearts. You just bring it to him. Everything in your heart that God brings to the surface could be burdens, could be worries, could be fears, as well as the ugly and wrongful things every desire thought emotion care or worry you just bring them to jesus he's the lover of your soul he's the healer of your heart this is i want to end with uh, some jesus words in matthew 11 jesus says this he says come to me all you who are weary and heavy burdened and i will give you rest Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's Jesus' promise. He's telling us, you just come to me. You bring every burden, everything, anything you got, you just bring it to me. Give it to me. I'm going to give you rest for your soul. God is good. And Jesus, this morning, Lord, we pray, God, that you would form your tenderness in our hearts, Lord. That our lives, God, would really reflect your heart. Uh, that our lives would reflect the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Jesus, we need you this morning, God. We need you to form new hearts in us. And God, uh, this morning we just pray, Lord, that you would have your way uh, as we close in, in a time of worship, Lord. We pray, I just pray, God, that, that you would touch our hearts, Jesus. You would tenderize our hearts, God, that you would break up all the hard parts, Jesus. That you would allow us to hear your voice, Jesus. That we would become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, sensitive to your presence, God. That you would bring healing, Jesus to the, the, the hurt parts, God, the sinful parts, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that your word says that, that if we do come and confess our sins to you, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We love you, Jesus, for who you are. We thank you that you're good in every way. Search our hearts this morning, Jesus. We give you permission. You got to give them permission to do it. We give you permission this morning, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen.